Got a minute. After the betrayals, the arrest and mock trial, the beatings, they crucified Jesus. He let them do it, nails through his hands and feet to suspend him on the cross. Even from the cross, Jesus remained focused on God taking care of his people and even forgiving the very people who put him there. In his last breaths, he cried out, it is finished. And Jesus died, the perfect sacrifice for all our sins. Everything went dark and there was an earthquake. Tombs opened and dead people arose. A thick temple curtain that separated the holiest place from the other rooms was torn in two. Friday night and nothing seemed very good. The long awaited Messiah was dead. A follower buried Jesus in a donated tomb and the family and his friends and followers sat in their grief and loss. Until Sunday morning, just after sunrise, some women who followed Jesus went to the tomb to anoint his body with spices. But they found the tomb open and empty. The women were greeted by angels, men who gleamed like lightning, who told them that Jesus was not there, but rather, he has risen. Joyful, afraid, and confused, the women run to share the news with the other disciples who are also confused, but maybe hopeful because Peter and John hurry to the tomb and also find it empty. So they wait again. But Jesus is indeed risen, and the risen Lord is on the move. He appears to Mary Magdalene and some women, to two people on the road outside Jerusalem, and finally to his followers. What an amazing joy-filled reunion it must have been. Jesus' disciples don't understand it all, but they know this. Jesus is alive, he has conquered death, and he's back with them. And that's all they need to know to have hope again.